What up, Doe? My name is Gunna Strong, and I hunt the dogmen. Despite what you may have heard, the cryptids are real. I know this because me and two friends were attacked by the Michigan dogmen and I survived. Now I hunt them in the name of my boys. Rest in peace, Terry and Marlon. Cassandra and I got a little cottage in Mount Pleasant, Michigan to be closer to the forest. It's a small place, two bedrooms and a bathroom, just big enough for the two of us. It's a log and plank home surrounded by forest with a long driveway. It took her a little while to get used to Sheba. They don't hiss at each other anymore and Cassandra hasn't tried to eat her. Thank goodness. Sam and Jeff are with Duncan, rebuilding the cabin and installing some new technology they invented. I told you the twins were very smart. The cabin still looks the same, just a small one-bedroom log cabin on the outside, but underneath is a whole different beast. Now it has six rooms instead of two. The twins have really come a long way. They can cast spells that can be pretty scary. Jeff is an awesome alchemist. He can turn anything into gold or silver, which is very handy. He can also command trees and shit to grab you and tear you apart. Me and Cassandra have also been training. I need to be as strong as possible to defeat Jerib. Our last encounter nearly left me dead. And that Jerib was just one of his clones. Cassandra told us where their den was. After learning as much as we could about the pack, we set off to find it with Cassandra's help. As we got closer, I was amazed by the size of the den. It was nothing like I imagined. What I thought would be like a beaver's den was actually a steel building, like a heavy equipment garage. There were some drones patrolling and a few wary outstanding guard, but nothing we couldn't handle. Cassandra said, they must have moved the den to a different location. Sam said, we go in any way. It made me smile. The twins fitted me in Cassandra's clothes with the same tech as my father's outfit, so we don't need to undress. I have silver armor on my vital areas, like my abdomen, back, arms, and thighs. It's painted flat black for stealth. Cassandra is affected by silver, so she wears steel armor. She looks extremely sexy in it. We fuck after every mission. We took up positions around the building, now communicating on our in-ear radios that can't be tracked or scrambled. We came up with a plan to enter the structure. Sam will distract the wary oats while Jeff takes care of the drones. Me and Cassandra will enter the structure and clear it before Sam and Jeff enter. They can definitely hold their own, but they are vulnerable to attacks. Unlike me and Cassandra, they cannot regenerate. Sam was waiting for the drones that were patrolling to walk close enough together before casting a spell that ignited them all into a burst of flames, crackling and shrieking a horrid sound of death. Fucking crazy. Alerted, the words guarding the back entrance started to investigate. Jeff used alchemy to make vines shoot out from the surrounding forest and grab the three ugly fucks before they even took a step. The vines wrapped around their arms, head and legs, simultaneously squeezing until their limbs and heads fell off. The vines let go of the torsos. They fell to the ground with a wet thump and blood rained for several seconds. Cassandra and I ran up to the door. The two guards turned to investigate, but it was too late. Cassandra shot the first coyote in the face with a Desert Eagle 45. Jeff cast a spell on our ammunition. They are hollow point solid silver projectiles with a copper jacket. The silver repels cryptid flesh like two magnets, resulting in an explosion. The copper is not charmed, so it will not react until it hits a soft target and fragments. The dog's head exploded in a violent reaction. It was sick. I shot the other in the chest with the 10 gauge. 
With the same reaction, he exploded into pieces, a leg nearly hitting me in the face. Cassandra spun around and dropped to one knee, covering my six. I ran over to the door, blew off the hinges, and kicked it over. I rolled in like a James Bond movie, landing on my right knee and my left leg extended. Anticipating the kick from the 10 gauge, I searched the large area. Nothing. I radioed to Cassandra and told her it's clear. Walking in behind me, Cassandra let the twins know it's clear. A few minutes later, Sam and Jeff ran in wielding modified AR-15s with the same machined and charmed hand-loaded ammunition. We need to split up, I said. Sam and Jeff take the upper level. Cassandra and I will take this level. If you have any trouble, radio in. We meet back here in 20. The twins headed up the steel staircase while we headed for Jareeb's quarters. We entered a dark hallway with a door at the end. Cautiously, we advanced. Reaching the door, I gesture in a one, two, three with my fingers. On three, we busted through the door with guns ready. The whole den seems to be abandoned. Cassandra walked over to a bookcase and pulled out a book labeled Shadow Pack. The bookcase turned like a Scooby-Doo episode, revealing a staircase leading down to another room. Cassandra walked down into the room and I followed. This is his secret lab, Cassandra said. The walls were adorned with intricate West African art, masks and spears. There were paintings of Mansa Musa and three other men hanging. One man looked like a younger version of Mansa, obviously Evander. The other must be Jerib. It can't be, I said. Is Jerib the grandson of the legendary Mandingo warrior Mansa Musa? I walked over to an area cut off by a curtain. I pulled it aside. There were six incubation chambers with two young, dark-skinned kids and two teenagers. They all looked alike. They were submerged in a liquid of some sort, with tubes leading through the wall and floor. These must be his clones, I said. Cassandra said yes, they are, and two are missing. They must be with Jerib, I said. Just then the twins radio in and yelled, it's a trap. We have two minutes before the building explodes. Me and Cassandra changed into our canine forms and ran for the exit with blinding speed. The twins were running like hell down the stairs, amazingly not tripping down one step. We ran out of the building just in time before the whole thing exploded, sending a shockwave that knocked us back five feet. Luckily, Sam and Jeff were in front of me and Cassandra. We absorbed the brunt of the blast. After brushing ourselves off, the twins said they found the scientist. They tried to help him, but he changed into a huge black leopard. He was sitting on a chair with a pressure switch. When he got up, the timer started counting down. Sam shot him in the face and we got the fuck out of there. Jeff managed to grab a few files before the explosion. It turned out to be a good mission after all. The files contained research regarding the drones, experiments with his DNA and the scientists. They have successfully engineered a Weirkat and the scientist was the human test subject. We got back to Duncan's cabin and gave him the newly developing information. We know Jerib is scared and on the run, but he has the means to genetically engineer werecats. Me, Cassandra, and the twins went home for a couple days to recover from the blast. When we got home, Cassandra went straight to the bathroom and turned the shower on. She stripped off her armor and skin-tight clothing. Looking at her huge tits and perfect round ass, I walk into the bathroom. I grabbed her by the back of the neck with one hand and the other gripping her waist. I forced her head forward while pulling her ass towards me. I got on my knees and spread her brown cheeks wide open. She lifted her ass to present her dripping pink slit. 
licking her from clit to asshole, she moaned, pushing her brown bubble cheeks into my face. I put my tongue into her pink hole. She started ramming her slit into my tongue until a sticky web of her juices stretched between her slit and my beard. I put two fingers inside of her glistening pink hole and tapped her G-spot until her legs were shaking. She erupted, soaking everything behind her with her love juices. She told me to fuck her mouth with my massive shaft. She grew her coyote ears and tail, got on her knees placing her hands on her thighs and opened her mouth. I massaged my shaft and slapped her on the lips with it before sliding it into her mouth. I fucked her warm wet face until she choked and spat. As she was still gasping for air, I told her to get on her hands and knees. She did what her alpha told her to do. I mounted her from behind grabbing a handful of her tail, sliding my length into her slit and pulling her tail at the same time she gasped. I grabbed and squeezed her tits while pounding ecstasy into her until we both came. A few feet from the shower she walks away, switching and wagging her tail seductively. She stopped before getting in and looked at me out the corner of her eye and said she will kill and eat a bitch for even thinking about her dick. I believe her. She can be possessive and I love it. After getting cleaned up, I messed around with Sheba and got her fired up. She is two years old at this point, so her claws hurt. We play fight every chance I get. I rolled a fat joint. Garlic starship. I believe it was. We smoked about half and put it out. We ate a deer, drank some wine, then smoked the rest. Duncan called a day later and said he has some new toys for me. Fuck yeah. I love new toys. We don't live too far from Duncan now, maybe a 45 minute drive. Me and Cassandra jumped in Ruby a black Rubicon gladiator. My second love. She has a 1,000 horsepower elephant engine, 30-inch tires, 10-inch lift kit, and a winch that will pull two Bettys without sweating. She is armored from the ground up. I selected DMX where my dog's at from the playlist and let the Bose system massage my back. Pushing the start button, she roared to life. Headed towards Duncan's cabin. We stopped by the store and got a six-pack. I think I'll finally get Duncan to drink a beer with me. He used to drink wine, but he got drunk one night, and a battle with a Wendigo almost caused him his life. So I do understand not getting fucked up, for sure. But one beer won't hurt. We arrived at the cabin and got out of Ruby. Duncan greeted us at the door with a warm welcome. He said he has new information on the pack. One of his hunters named Lucas is penned down in the Florida Everglades and needs help. People are being reported missing and bodies are popping up that have been mulled. Lucas says local rumors have it that large coyotes are responsible. I head out the next day. I ask Duncan where my new toys are with a big smile on my face. Cassandra looked at me and rolled her eyes, sighing. Laughing, I told her, this is man's business. She said, whatever alpha, and walked into the next room. Duncan laughed. He pulled out a file labeled Shadow Pack, the same as the book in Jareeb's den. What is Shadow Pack? I asked Duncan. Shadow Pack is the pack Evander formed in the 1500s. His father, Mansa Musa, was a legendary Mandingo warrior who became king. He married many wives and had many children. One of those wives, unbeknownst to him, was aware. When Mansa Musa found out about the secret she was harboring, he became infuriated and had his wife beheaded. Before he had a chance to do the same to Evander, she put him on a slave ship and was sent to America as a slave. When Evander grew up, he realized his gift and used it to escape and free many slaves. 
a few of those slaves he changed, thus forming the Shadow Pack. Evander helped start the Underground Railroad in Detroit. He made over 2,000 trips through the system. He was a good man at first. Then Jerib was born and got very big, even bigger than Evander, and eventually challenged him. Duncan and the twins put a new security system on the safe room. It no longer has a spellbound combination lock. The twins came up with a system that will give an illusion of a wall. With a writing desk and chair in front of it, Duncan pressed the button on a smartwatch he was wearing, and the illusion disappeared, revealing a staircase. Fucking amazing, I said. I walked with Duncan down into the safe room. He still has the hieroglyphs as a locking system. He put in the combination, and the wall rolled up for the arsenal. Duncan grabbed a tactical KS-23 10-gauge shotgun with a foregrip, a black Magnum 500, and a pair of Ickler and Koch USP, matching pistols for Cassandra. Oh man, I said chuckling. She's going to love these bitches. I checked the action on the pistols and the trigger pull. It feels like a two pounds trigger with a crisp break. I asked Duncan where Lucas was exactly, in the city, or in the actual Everglades. Duncan said yes, he is at the Daniel Beard Research Center. He is out of ammo, and every time he tries to escape, he's attacked by dogmen. Does Lucas have a cell phone, or a way for me to contact him? I asked. Duncan handed me a phone and a paper map. He said the location is marked. Okay, I'll have him free tomorrow night, I said. Good, Duncan replied. On the way back upstairs, I asked Duncan to have a beer with me. Surprisingly, he said yes, just one. I handed Cassandra her pistols and her face lit up. She gave Duncan the biggest hugs. We had a beer, then me and Cassandra headed back home to get ready for the mission. The whole time she was playing with her guns. They have custom controls, ambidextrous mag release, safety, red dot sights, extended 20 round magazines, and a shitload of charmed ammo. When we got home, I took a few shots with the 500 to dial in the sights. That bitch kicks like a mule. Cassandra did the same. She is a very good shot. We packed up Ruby with our equipment and hit the road. We made it to Florida in about 18 hours. I called Lucas on the phone Duncan gave me. He answered and said, get me the fuck out of here. I said, I'm on my way, bro. Hold on. We drove down Research Road a ways and parked, about a mile or so from the building. I call Lucas again and tell him I have to hike in a mile. I don't want any unnecessary attention. He said he is in the building adjacent to the research center. The building with no windows and a steel bay door. We got maybe 200 yards away from the location, and I can smell words in the close distance. Cassandra smells them too. We changed into our K9 forms, 10 gauge in hand. Cassandra looks like a black Laura Croft with her guns ready. I wish I could fuck her right now. We hear multiple dogmen running through the swamp, making a splashing and with squashing sound. Now in our vision, we start shooting the dogs. There must be 16 of them. Cassandra is firing in quick succession. Bang, 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 bang. Dogmen blowing up and raining blood. The 10 gauge is kicking hard with each pump and trigger pull, splattering the ugly fox in the air. Out of ammo, I switch to the 500. Hammer back, boom. The hand cannon kicked back against my hand, sending a small shockwave of energy through my arm, taking off a big wur's head. It still ran a few steps before dropping. Me and Cassandra changed back into our human forms and ran up to the building and beat on the door. It's gonna open the door. Lucas opened the door about two feet. Me and Cassandra rolled in. 
Lucas is a short, stocky Native American man with long hair and tattoos. I can tell he is human by his scent. You're human. I asked Lucas rhetorically. Smiling, he responded, Yes. As a matter of fact, I am. You must be a badass to be fighting these things, and only human, I said. I was trained in the art of vampire hunting by Eric Brooks, Lucas responded. He continued, I set a trap for a skinwalker I was hunting, and it got the attention of those shapeshifters. I held my ground until I ran out of ammo and arrows. I found this place two days ago. I loaded up the 10 gauge with pure silver buckshot and took the spent shells out of the 500 and loaded it back up. We got ready to make our exit when a big crash against the steel door nearly knocked it over. There was a huge dent in the door and presumably something huge on the other side. I changed into my wolf form and cocked the 10 gauge. Cassandra sniffed the air. She looked at me concerned. Lucas said that is what's been keeping me in here. The beast outside howled as to call for backup. I growled and said it's Jared. Cassandra said no, it's James. Another slam. This time sending the door's components flying like shrapnel. Who the fuck is James? Aiming at the huge dent in the door, ready for the donkey kick from the 10 gauge. Cassandra said it's my son. Your son? I said confused. My firstborn. Like Jerib, he has the ability to change. Another slam, making a hole in the side of the door big enough to fit his head in. I aimed at its face, putting pressure on the trigger. Cassandra said wait. It was looking at us roaring and growling. Long strings of slobber hanging from its mouth. Cassandra said James. Stop. The big were opened its eyes wide with surprise and said mom. Cassandra said yes, it's me. He retreated from the hole. Cassandra walked to the small personnel door. I said stop Cassandra. She said it's okay Alpha. She opened the door. We both walked outside. A teenager stood before us. He was chiseled but small and dirty. He looked at me and growled. I raised the 500 and said, if you feel like a frog, leap. My boy, you don't want to feel this round. Cassandra said, James, what are you doing here? Father made me come. He left me in charge of a small unit. Who is he? James asked Cassandra. I said I am her alpha. Gunna. Still pointing the 500 at him. Cassandra said, James, your father raped me and tried to kill me. Gunna saved my life. With eyebrows lifted, he said in a soft voice. Father said you deserted us. No, honey, I would never do that to you, baby. Cassandra replied. I lowered my magnum, squeezing the trigger with my thumb on the hammer, dropping it slowly and changed back into my human form. Lucas whistled. I looked. He was standing in the door frame calmly, holding a bow and three arrows. He said we have company pointing. I turned around and drew the 500 and fired so fast it would have made Doc Holliday proud. The kid flinched. I looked at him and said, are you going to let your friends hurt your mother kid? Lucas spun and dropped to the ground in the downward spiral, firing his last three arrows, hitting a dog man in his chest, head, and arm. I yelled to Cassandra, get Lucas inside. Cassandra drew her guns and fired on two dogmen in her retreat, blowing them to pieces. The kid changed into his coyote form and went after one of the dogmen, slashing him to a bloody mess. I shot two more and exploded their heads. One stopped, looking at the kid smiling and said in a crackling, drawn-out voice, James, and laughed. It turned and ran away. The kid said, it's an elder. He's going to tell my father. I changed into my wolf form, looked at the kid, and told him to get inside. 
I got this. Go protect your mother. He nodded. Sniffing the air, I caught the dog scent. I took off after him running as fast as I could. I caught up with him after 20 minutes of running. Hey bitch, wait for me. I yelled. He stopped and turned around. Now walking calmly, I confronted him. You know I can't let your old ass live, right? I said. He responded, put your guns down and fight like a man. Without hesitation, I dropped my guns next to a tree and cracked my knuckles. Let's do it then, I said. He ran at me slashing. I blocked his attack and threw a right cross. My fist made purchase against his face, knocking out teeth. He stumbled back. He threw a dragon kick straight from Tekken. I threw my head back and it just missed my face. He followed up with an uppercut that hit my armor. Nearly setting his hand on fire, he yelped in pain. Looking surprised, he turned and tried to run, but I grabbed his mane and snatched him back. Gravity took over and he crashed to the marshy ground with an audible splash. Still holding him by the fur, I struck him in the muzzle with a hammer fist. I raised my hand and came back down on his face with all my might, this time splashing blood. I raised my hand and came down again. His blood splattered on my face. I raised to come down one more time, but he covered his face and said I submit Alpha. He changed into his human form. He is a very old man. Where is Cherub? I barked. In between gasps for air and coughing, he said seven miles north. In a warehouse. There are seven others and a clone with him. I sat with him until his breath shallowed and he drifted into the darkness. I radio Cassandra and told her I'm on my way back. Upon arrival, she ran up to me and hugged me tight. James asked if I got him. I rubbed his head and said, I got him, kid. He sighed in relief. Jerib isn't far from here. I said to Cassandra, I'm going to take his ass out before leaving. I need to make a few calls. Cassandra talked to James. It has to be hard finding out your father is a rapist and murderer. I have nothing but sympathy for the kid. I went and got Ruby and parked her in front of the James Beard Research Center. Lucas said he would help, but he needs ammo and arrows. I'll give him a lift to get what he needs. But right now, we all need some sleep. We drove to a hotel. A room for Lucas, one for the kid, and plenty of snacks. I doubt he's ever tasted a potato chip. And one for me and Cassandra. I can't wait to see her naked. We all went into our respective rooms. I called Duncan to let him know I got Lucas and Jerib is close. I will need backup. I need the twins to meet me here. I said to Duncan. He said the twins are on a mission right now, but call Kentucky Ballistics, Garen Thumb, Brandon Herrera, and Colion Noir. I called Kentucky first. I told him I need a very big gun for a big Wariyoti. He said he will bring Fury. Fury is a punt gun with a muzzle velocity of around 2,000 feet per second and will fire a pound of silver shot. Garen Thumb and Coleon said they will be there. Brandon is busy with politics and shit, so he will call his people to keep the police away and call Demolitia Ranch. Jerib is going down. I asked Cassandra to stay behind, to keep James out of the fight. I don't need him getting confused. She didn't like it, but understands. We got in the shower to get cleaned up. I love looking at Cassandra's fat ass. I started kissing her neck and squeezing her tits. She pushed her ass against me and made me rock hard. She turned around. I grab her throat. It drives her crazy. I picked her up against the shower wall and slipped my shaft into her pink wet slit. 
she moaned for more. Wrapping her legs around me, she lifts herself and back down, fucking me back. I came deep inside of her. After our shower, I rolled us a nice fat joint. We took it to the face. Cassandra fell asleep. I watched her for a while. She's like a black sleeping beauty. After I kill Jared, I'm going to ask her to marry me. As the hour hand made its rounds, a plan began to form in my head. By daybreak, I was ready to hunt. I woke up Cassandra and told her I was about to go. She told me I better come back to her. I replied, I am not going to die today or anytime soon, baby, and kissed her. I knocked on Lucas's door. He was ready to hunt as well. I called Duncan's hunters. Kentucky Ballistics, Garen Thumb, and Coleon Noir, and told them to meet us at Lucas's shop, ASAP. We got to the shop, and it wasn't too long before there was a knock on the door. The boys made it. I can tell by their scent that they were all werewolves. Kentucky handed me fury. He said if I break it, I bought it. Garen brought his AR and grenades. Coleon had an AR and a few other guns. Demolitia had a railgun, an AR and a Desert Eagle 50. Loaded and locked, we headed out. Garen Thumb made a bet that he would kill the most coyotes. We all took that bet. We made it to the warehouse and parked our respective vehicles about a mile out from the location. I told the boys if it howls, kill it, but Jerib and his clone are mine. Since Lucas is the only human, he made himself the decoy to draw the coyotes out. We set up a camp with a bonfire and music. We put a bunch of meat on a fire pit grill, making it seem like there are campers around. The guys will howl as to signal there's food in the area. I'll storm the warehouse when they come out to eat Lucas. I made my way to the den. Upon arrival, I radio in and tell the guys that I'm in position. Howls filled the air. After 20 minutes, 10 to 15 dogmen ran out to their feast. Before the door closed, I changed into my wolf form and entered the building with fury and my faithful 500. Gunfire erupted over the radio. Smiling, I said to myself, kill them all boys. I walked over to a door and looked through a window. It was a laboratory. There are computers, test tubes, Bunsen burner, and microscopes on the counter. I shifted to the right to get a better view. I seen cages with what looked to be Bengal cats. I seen a door next to the cages. My instincts told me I needed to get through that door. I tried to open the door separating me from it, but it was locked. I looked around and didn't see or hear anything. Still holding the knob, I shoulder checked it. To my surprise, it wasn't too loud. Just a quick audible snap. The door creaked and moaned as I pushed it open. I entered the room with fury. I made my way over to the cages and let the cats out. They looked sickly. Fucking assholes didn't even give them food or water. Looking around, I spot a sink and a few Petri dishes. I gathered them and filled them with water and brought each cat a dish. I went back over to the computer and pressed a key on the keyboard, waking it up. I opened a file labeled Experiment 1. A video player popped up. I hit play. The video showed Jerib and his clone. One of them opened a cage and took a cat out holding it down on the counter. The other Jerib injected the cat. They both stood back. The cat started twitching and convulsing violently. After a period, it stopped moving. The time frame sped up to hours. The cat started contorting. Yowling and seeming in pain, it grew into something of a nightmare. Just thin, Garen thumb radios in and said, you have company headed your way. Looks like three werecats moving fast. 
Coleon and Demolitia are behind them. Something crashed against the door I was headed to, leaving a big bulge protruding. I raised Fury and pulled her hammer back. Leaning forward, preparing for the horse kick, the door bursts open. I'm glad I didn't voluntarily open the door myself. Four seven-foot cats, with claws that would make Wolverine smile walked out of the room. I squeezed Fury's trigger. Almost instantly, they all jumped. But Fury splattered two of them and took off one's legs. Fury only had one shot. Stunned from Fury's horse kick, the other one nearly took my face off with its huge claws. Demolitia came in just in time. He sent a burst of fire with the railgun, taking off the cat's head and arm. I looked at Demolitia like that was close. I walked over to the legless cat and blew his head off with the 500. Coleon walked over to the computer and grabbed a file next to it. I played another video. Demolitia went into the next room. The video is of the scientist being injected and changing into a werecat. It reminded me of a Stephen King movie. Demolitia came out and said I needed to see this. We walked over to a laptop with a live feed. It's Jerib. He's at the room, and he has Cassandra and James tied up. Both of their faces were bloody, and Cassandra was crying, saying my name. I was filled with rage, and my eyes started glowing green. Two more where cats came through the door. Kentucky Ballistics drew a little 4570 Derringer and fired at one of the cats blowing its head off. Now filled with rage, I grabbed the other cat. It wrapped its arm around me and tried to bite my face. I grabbed its face with one hand and jaw with the other. I pulled until I separated its face into two pieces, making a cracking and wet tearing sound. It screeched in pain, letting me go. I kicked it in the chest, sending it flying into a wall. I pulled out the 500. Hammer back. Boom. My brother's charmed ammunition exploded the cat, coating the walls with fur and crimson paste. I loaded Fury back up and told the other guys I have to go to Cassandra. Kentucky Ballistics, Demolitia Ranch and Garen Thumb will stay here for Jareeb's clone. Coleon Noir will follow me out until I get to the main road then come back to the other hunters. Coleon and I changed into our wolf forms. We got to Ruby in minutes. I let the windshield down and put Fury's barrel in its void. I pushed the start button. She roared to life, sounding as pissed as me. I put her in drive and smashed the accelerator. The 1,000 horsepower elephant beast growled and screamed, spinning all for tires, leaving a cloud of rubber smoke. Leaving Coleon, I reached the hotel in 25 minutes. Sniffing the air, trying to pick up Cassandra scent. I don't want to have to choose doors. It smells like she's in James's room. Creeping up to the door, I hear Coleon pull up in his black jeep. I asked him what he was doing here. You're supposed to be at the den. Coleon said he couldn't let me face Jareb alone. I told him to take the right door and I'll take left. On three. Just as Coleon started to kick in the door, I thought about the pressure switch at Jareeb's den. Wait. Trying to regain his balance, Coleon nearly fell into the door. He looked at me like what the fuck. I said something isn't right. We walked over to Lucas's door. I shoulder checked the door, opening it. We walked in and I said we go through the wall. I ran and busted through the wall. Coleon came in after me and said, Damn bro, Cassandra is tied up and bleeding. James is unconscious and bleeding. Just as I predicted, they are sitting on bombs. And the door is rigged too. Cassandra? I said. She tried to lift her head. Hold on baby. Cleaning her face, I said. I'm so sorry I left you alone. 
Coleon kneeled down to study the bomb. After a period, he said, I'll be right back. What? I asked. He replied, I need tools to disarm this bomb. He left and came back with a battery, cutters, and a lighter. He said he has to connect a power source to the pressure switch. He grabbed a wire and traced it to the chair. He took the lighter and burned away the installation. Then he connected wires to the battery. From the battery, he twisted the wires to the exposed wires on the switch. He said it was safe. I ripped Cassandra's restraint off and picked her up. No explosion. That was fucking amazing. I said. Coleon smiled. He grabbed James and we headed out to Ruby. Jared was standing outside clapping. I told Coleon to put them in the jeep. I have something to take care of. Jerib said. Is that right? Hearing the door open and close, I approached Jerib. I am going to kill you for what you did to Cassandra. He laughed. I changed into my wolf form. Jerib did too. Towering over me, he pulled out a sword. It was an ancient African sword with a wicked looking blade. He got into a fighting stance. I looked at Ruby and seen Fury sticking out the windshield. In a blink of an eye, I had Fury. Ready to fire, I squeezed her trigger. A fireball exploded from her barrel, sending one pound of buckshot hurling towards Jerib. The silver slammed into his body, making huge holes. He jerked as the shot tore through his back, painting Colian's jeep crimson. Fury's recoil put me on my ass. I looked to see Jerib twitching and bleeding out. I pulled out my 500 and blew his head off again. Coleon extended his hand to help me up. He said Kentucky is going to be pissed at you. For what I replied, Coleon pointed at Fury, still smoking. Half of her stock is broke off. Fuck. Yeah, he is. Garen thumb radioed in and said they captured the clone. They beat the shit out of him and knocked him unconscious. Brandon Herrera is going to have him picked up and contained. Now awake, James said, I thought he loved me. I told him, it's going to be okay, kid. I got him and Cassandra to Lucas's place so they could clean themselves up. Now regenerated, they both look better. I gave Kentucky Fury back and he was pissed. I paid for her though, so that made him happy. James is the great-great-grandson of Mansa. He will be the new Alpha of the Shadow Pack when he turns 18. There are still a few elders left that hated Jerob. The kid still has three years, so he will train with Duncan until then. When we got back to Michigan, I asked Cassandra to marry me. She said yes. We got married in the forest at night. Cassandra looked amazing. We wore red. Duncan married us. The twins and Garantham thought it would be funny to give me a high point yeet cannon for a wedding gift. It was. Me, the twins, Kentucky, Garen, Coleon, Brandon, and Demolitia all had a beer and laughed at our stories. You know, guy shit. Cassandra grew her coyote ears and tail. She looked at me and winked her eye. I love it when she does that. Well, I am going to sneak off with my wife for a bit. You know what time it is. I'll talk to you all in the next post. Peace and chicken grease. Thank you for listening to my story. I work two jobs and 60 hours a week. I write and edit all my videos by myself. So when I say thank you, I really mean it.